I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to part two of my color challenge where I'm creating a lot of different colorways with dark navy, forest green, and cabernet acid dyes from Dharma Trading Company. Today's video is going to focus on some Patreon requested techniques and I am so excited to play with some of these because honestly some of these were at the top of my list of things I wanted to do anyway. What are my self-imposed rules for the color challenge? My goal is to create at least three colorways in each video, uh, featuring three different techniques. So for example, if I create a tonal of each of the colors, uh, that counts as one technique, one colorway, even though there might be three different colors. I need to use all three colors on each same colorway or set, and the color of the bare yarn is allowed to show through. Not all three colors need to be used in equal proportions, but overall the goal is to try to see all the colors versus have them be blended together. With the asterisk, since this is part two, I will be doing techniques that will involve more blending and mixing of the colors. And finally, the goal is to have fun. In part one of the color challenge, we looked at some tonals and specifically to do a little bit of color mixing of the three colors. I did a super heavy speckled look using dry powder on the countertop to give like splotched random color placement. And then I did some dip dyeing using about a third of the yarn for each of the colors to create a softer, variegated yarn. This ended up not quite being pastel, but I was using lower depths of shade to try to get something a little bit more muted with these colors. If you want early access to the Dye Pop PS series and some other really fun perks, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com slash Chemnitz, and I'll talk more about this towards the end of the video. But now, let's go look at the first technique. All of the yarn that we will be using in today's video is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And it's a base I use really, really often. Now, you might be able to tell the first technique that we are gonna be doing. Uh, we are going to twist our skeins and layer the colors one at a time. Uh, this technique provides a really nice resist. So after each round, we are gonna have areas that have more and less color. And so we should, in theory, be able to see all three colors in the end, which I am really excited about. Um, but it depends on how deeply the colors penetrate into our yarn. I pre-soaked the yarn in plain tap water with no acid for at least 30 minutes, probably closer to about an hour. In this eight quart stainless steel pot, I have 16 cups of water and I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I think I wanna start with the forest green, which is the lightest color of the three. And so I'm adding a total of 150 milliliters of the 1% stock solution we mixed as part of part one. And now we just need to wait for the dye bath to heat up. I think that I'm doing similar techniques to what I did in my first color challenge, or maybe my patrons are voting for similar things. Not exact, but similar. But anyway, the pot isn't like boiling yet, but we're going in. We're going in with the green. It's warm, it's just not that hot. Things are folded a weird way, but hopefully uh, the yarn can access the dye as much as is required. And so I have no idea, I'm trying not to press it, just sort of poke these in a little bit. Uh, I have no idea how long it'll take for the color to absorb, uh, but we're just gonna wait, <laughs> I guess, while that happens. I maybe overdid it a little bit. I think with my goal of trying to have there be a lot of green um, and not having that feel too pastel, I maybe am setting this off on a very um, deep and saturated journey. But you know what? That is okay. So at this point, I am removing it. I'm not untwisting them yet, but I am trying to remove 
um, a fair amount of liquid. And after a little bit, I will open it up and remove more liquid so that way it cools off enough so that way I can retwist. But check out that resist. And since I want to reuse the same water for the other colors, we are gonna have a Moppity Bop that's gonna soak up this yellowish green that we have left. And then of course, we can use this with the other two colors as well as needed. But you can see <laughs> when you have some yarn that is not all twisted, how quickly the color goes in. But anyway, when that cools, we'll open them up. I thought I was filming. I just untwisted them to try to squeeze out more liquid. There wasn't a lot of liquid in there, but I just wanted to show we do have some large white sections, but a lot of green, a lot of nice green, and hopefully some of that will remain once we're done with the colors. But it's cool enough that I can twist it. But before we do that, I am going to put the tiny bit of water we removed in the pot, grab our little mop, which is looking, this looks like a pistachio green to me right now. Um, that is how I would classify it. But let's go ahead and do our navy next. And I'm gonna lean in to the dark color. I've got about 100 milliliters of our 1% stock solution of dark navy. So this should be as dark, approximately, as the green. And then rinsing out the graduated cylinder, and we're gonna let this heat up. Oh my gosh, it wasn't filming again. I swear that it was filming. Okay, well thankfully I have one left to do, and I'm not gonna need to redo any of them. So, what I like to do is take the yarn and rearrange it. I move where the zip tie is located, so that way we can focus on other areas. And then, because the yarn is wet, I can't do the kind of twist I would normally do if I was gonna skein yarn up. So with my fingers inside the loop where I have the zip tie, I twist it up. And then, again, because it's wet, I'm wrapping the yarn around itself before sticking the edge in. And the goal is to have some white visible because that means we will get some just navy in addition to some areas where the colors are gonna layer on top of each other. I can't believe twice in a row. Uh, the reason why the camera may not have been on is that when you go and press record, sometimes that just wakes the camera back up, but doesn't start recording. And coming in with the yarn. And I'm going to grab a spoon to just poke that end in. And now I'm going to let things sit for about 20 minutes and then we will check in and decide if we need to do anything else. Yeah, maybe things are going to end up being a wee bit super saturated. Oh man, I mean you can still see the other colors coming through the resist. Uh, I think, you know, my goal was to have approximately a 1% depth of shade across the board, maybe a little bit higher because I was using a little bit more green. But maybe, ooh, that's like yellow. Maybe once it's time for the red, well, we'll see what this looks like when I open it up, but maybe once it's time for the red, I will reduce that and use even less. Which wouldn't be bad since that is the dominant color. But anyway, I'm amazed that it's this like yellow color left. but. Here is our yarn mop. This time I am actually recording and you can see the little bit of green peeking through and we'll see how little there is now. No, there's still, there's still a fair amount of green here. We still got a lot of green and we've got white. And so with this next round, we really, really want to get some of this white towards the outside. Um, we want that to really make a presence for when we do our final color. And so sometimes that may mean, okay, we open this up and sort of like flip it inside out a little bit so that way we can get some of that more white area towards the outside. 
and you know you can also move where the zip tie is I like to do that as well it's nice to see that we do have oh we got a little bit of like brown from something uh, but it's nice to see that we do have so much coverage as well so now once again I'm gonna put the white sort of towards the bottom I am a little perplexed by the yellow we had with the navy maybe I got too hot and I forgot to keep my thumb in there, but thankfully the zip tie helps a little bit. And so then we can twist this up and get ready for our third color. But having, I mean, it's funny, like I definitely want coverage of the yarn and we want areas that were white to be able to get color. But also, the Cabernet is the deepest of the colors, and so it is probably going to cover everything up a fair amount. Uh, and you can kind of adjust the twist to expose more white. Uh, should you need to. I feel like this section, I promise the other ones are going to go a bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest one of the techniques, uh, but I'm very, very excited to see how this ends up. And I will say that, and I feel like I said this in the last video too, but just the forest green and the navy is such a stunning combination. First, I need to remove the mop, and I can turn the heat back up a little bit. I had reduced the heat a fair amount. Right now it is very, very green. Very pistachio feeling still. And this time with the Cabernet, I only have 75 milliliters of our 1% stock solution. I know this color is significantly more pigmented than the forest green and not significantly, but it is stronger. It is more dominant than the dark navy. And so that's why I'm using so much more of it than I did the other colors. And now let's add the yarn. Add it in. There's a lot of that red and I can't see what's happening. So we're gonna wait 20 minutes and depending on how much color is left, I might add the yarn mop directly to uh, this basket or not. <laughs> we will see, but I'll be back in 20 minutes. 20 minutes in and that looks really, really dark. Uh, let's see how much color is left. A fair amount, a fair, fair amount. I'm gonna try to get this all the way in. I do not want to uh, untwist the yarn by accident because I don't want to cover it all up. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, because the yarn may end up needing some more heat, I think I'm going to remove, oh man, our twisted skeins. And let's try to soak up some more of this Cabernet with our yarn mop. <laughs> I'm glad I reduced it, that's so dark. Oh man, you know, sometimes you go for something and that's great. Okay, but let's see what we have here and move this around. I mean, this is an interesting color, I will say, uh, because we've got like red with like green undertones um, there's still a lot of color in the pot and I am trying to soak it up and get coverage over here. Uh, the color, it's interesting. I will probably use this as a yarn mop um, for another part um, of this video. But you can see now we are quickly soaking the rest of that color up. And so what I'm gonna do is leave this in here. I'm gonna want it to be in here for at least uh, 30 minutes. But what we can do, so we've got the steamer basket. 
And I want to make sure our twisted skeins get enough heat to set the color really, really well. So what I can do is plop these in the steamer basket and let them steam set up there for 30 minutes, even with them still twisted. Uh, because then when I remove it and open it up, I'm not going to feel like, okay, I need to go reset the color because maybe there's something not absorbed because there was still a lot of color in the pot. So anyway, I'll be back in 30 minutes. The timer went off and I just turned off the heat. And now I am going to remove the yarn. It feels very wet. Ooh, I see some green and blue in there still. All right, and I'm going to set this aside to cool so we can open them up. And while we're at it, we can remove our yarn mop, which actually I'm liking a lot more than I did when you could see more of the green. The colors blended a little bit. I still might use this uh, as a mop for the rest of the colors though. Let's open up these twisted skeins and I'm also going to prepare to wash them. So I am going to remove the one and untwist and wow. So we still have some pops of white, but I definitely see both the green and navy in there. That is really, really pretty. I would say the one thing that this technique does that is also really cool, in addition to preserving some of each of the colors, is that we get the colors at different depths of shade. So like there's areas here where we had a lot of the uh, Cabernet color, and then areas where we have a little bit less. And so that is really, really pretty and special. I would say overall, this is reading, I'm wondering if that color is gonna read burgundy or black or what, that deepest color. But it is really pretty and I'm, now glad that I went for as much color as I did because I think that this looks really, really cool. It would have been cool if the colors were more toned down, but I'm very excited to see it dry. And so I'm adding some dish soap to our yarn. And let's see. Woohoo! There's always a little concern when things are so pigmented in areas, but there's no bleeding. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap and put this into the spin dryer. And now let's look at some other colorways. For the second colorway, I wanted to layer the colors again, but this time I was gonna layer them with no resist. So we started with a kettle of 32 cups of water with six tablespoons of white vinegar. And then I picked a color from our triad color mixing that we did in the last video and decided I wanted to go with a proportion of two parts navy, one part cabernet, and one part forest green. I started with 75 milliliters of the forest green color and added 300 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn to the dye bath, moved it around, and waited about 10 minutes for the colors to absorb. It didn't matter if all of the color absorbed or not, uh, because most of the color would strike within those 10 minutes and give us a coverage that we wanted. I moved the zip ties on the yarn in between each reset, and I did that off camera, but then I added 75 milliliters of Cabernet to the pot. And I wanted to point out that the thing that's gonna make this different from just mixing all these colors together and dyeing it once is that we're gonna have some hue dimension on the yarn because with each layer, the color isn't gonna be perfectly even on the yarn. And so therefore, we might see bits that are have a little bit more green, a little bit more red, or a little bit more blue in them in the end. The Cabernet didn't all absorb. There was a little bit left after 10 minutes, but I didn't mind and decided to continue on to the navy. After debating a little bit myself, I decided to split the navy into two batches. And I started with 75 milliliters of the navy, already liking the direction it was going, even though that color still leaned fairly red with the one to one to one ratio of all three colors. And I knew that by doing the navy in two different steps, 
there would be more navy coverage over the yarn, but just one more chance of moving the zip tie and putting the yarn in meant that we really aren't likely to end up with any super pastel patches. At least I hope. And yes, I knew the color was already dark after that first round of navy, but we weren't even at a total 1% depth of shade for all of the colors. Because by the time I finished the second round of navy, we had added a total of 300 milliliters of dye of our 1% stock solutions, which is a total of three grams of dye. And since we have 300 grams of yarn, that's 1% depth of shade. The difference is that we've got two colors, the navy and cabernet, that are incredibly pigmented. And so that's why we're gonna have such a deep color overall. But I am very, very curious to see how much this, uh, how much depth and dimension we see, given that it's such a dark color. And now that all the colors are in, I'm gonna go ahead and add more acid. Uh, there was still some Cabernet left after the last two rounds, and so more acid will not hurt anything. Oh, a lot of the color has absorbed, uh, which honestly is great. It's a little hard, I definitely see some dimension in here. It's a little hard to say exactly what the color is like and how much variation we see on the yarn until it is cool. So what I'm gonna do now is heat this for 30 minutes, turn off the heat, and we'll check in. It has been 30 minutes, and let's see where we are. Just a hint of some reds. Uh, I'm not worried about that, but I think I will go ahead and just leave the yarn here in the pot to cool off. Uh, for a while. Uh, I'm not expecting those last bit of reds to necessarily uh, absorb, but you know, they may. We don't know. It's been a while, so I am now going to remove the yarn. And ooh, there's still, oh no, I think I lost part of my tongs in there. Um, there is still a bit of color in the pot. Uh, this was the case, I think, with the last colorway as well. Even after the yarn mop, there was a little bit left. So I'm not going to worry about bleeding immediately. But I will finish letting this cool so we can wash it. But I see a lot of dimension, and it's overexposed right now. But you can see, maybe that helps you see some of the dimension in there. I'm so happy. Let's wash our yarn, which to me still looks quite overexposed on camera. In person, it is very, very dark. Right now, I am feeling a lot more navy vibes, which is then purple, which is surprising me a bit because eh, maybe I can see some of the purple in there overall. But And it might look lighter once it's dry. But I guess the th reason why I'm surprised is because I remember feeling like the color I picked was so, so purple. So I don't know. But the good news is that we've got this deep, dark yarn and I'm not seeing any bleeding happen. So one, I suppose one other note that is worth considering with this color is that the dye sets I made were made for the original dye line. So I guess some colors could have settled, but I don't know. But we are gonna see no bleeding. That is great. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap, put this through my spin dryer, hang it dry, and let's look at another colorway. For our third colorway, we are going to create fine speckles on a pastel base. So I started with a kettle containing 32 cups of water and no acid. And while it was cold, I added just 10 milliliters of the 1% stock solution of forest green. Then I brought in 300 grams of pre-soaked stroll and moved it through the dye because I wanted to get really good coverage of this pastel color. So that's why I started cold. So that way the colors wouldn't strike nearly as fast. Then I added six tablespoons of white vinegar, moving the yarn around more, and you could see that the colors really did start to strike pretty quickly. But I still decided to go ahead and heat 
the yarn at least until it gets to about a simmer. Uh, we will be heating it more with the speckles, so I'm not worried about the length of time, but I did want to start with this beautiful minty green base before we layer on the speckles of all three colors. I transferred our pastel minty green yarn into my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And then using some of the dye bath from before, I added enough water so that way there would be water around the edges of the yarn, but we would have a lot of the yarn at the surface for applying the speckles. Then I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and mixed some of each of our three colors with some citric acid powder, and then came over with my gloved fingertips, still wearing the mask, uh, to apply the dye onto the yarn. Even though things were already pretty hot, the heat was on low. Once I was satisfied with the color coverage on one side, I waited five minutes before flipping the yarn to apply color to other parts of the yarn. I knew that there was a chance the colors could spread out uh, a bit because we are doing this with extra liquid in here, but that isn't something that I knew I would mind. What we did know is that we will have a predominantly green base because we started with that green color. Once I was satisfied with the total color coverage, I added more water from that original tonal kettle and heat set the yarn for 30 minutes. I removed our speckled yarn from the dye bath and then added in the yarn mop that we had used in one of the previous projects. I did wipe my fingers on this a little bit during the speckling, but since I was speckling with dry powder, there really wasn't a lot of transfer to my fingers, so it didn't get a lot of color. But I did have a lot of the citric acid mixed with colors left, and so I decided to go in and use up those dyes onto this yarn mop to make it a bit more variegated than it was already. There really wasn't that much dye powder that I had, so I wasn't sure how much of an impact this would make over the medium toned tonal that we had already, but I was excited to leave no dye behind. Honestly, I could have saved the dye powders, but I'm starting to accumulate a collection of dye powders that I have left over, so therefore I really just wanted to use these up. Once I had finished adding on the dye, I let this skein heat for 30 minutes before letting it cool completely so we could wash it. After our last two colorways cooled, I washed them in cool water with a little bit of dish soap, not anticipating any bleeding because these colors have all struck really, really well so far. Even if some of that Cabernet sometimes sticks to the pan or stays behind, the washing has been really, really great. I put the yarn in the spin dryer, hung it up to dry, and now let's finally take a look at all of the yarn that we dyed in part two of this color challenge. And here is the yarn from our color challenge part two. One thing I love about doing lots of different techniques and colorways, one of the things I love about doing these color challenges is that we end up with a lot of yarn that looks really good with other colorways we did here, even if the colors have blended a bit more. And that is something that I find really fun. But let's go through the, I guess we've got four colorways, but the three main color sections. Of all of the different colorways, twisting the skeins three times, going into three different saturated colors, gave us the most contrast. Uh, this is the loudest skein, the skein that has the most variation. And it's one that I think would look amazing in like a garter stitch type project or something that is more simple and stockinette. This is an example of a yarn that would overwhelm some lace or cables just because your eye will go to the colors more than the stitches. But I really, really like it. And I like how some of the areas with the most color start to feel, it's not quite black. It's a little bit redder than a black, but it also doesn't quite feel brown. But the thing that has me so excited is that you feel the each of the individual colors. Uh, you feel our green, you feel the red, and you can feel the navy's a bit more subtle, but you can still see the pops of the blue in there. And so I love that that is all still very present here in the yarn. Layering the colors one on top of another for a total depth of shade of I think about 1% 
I think we're still at about 1% depth of shade. The color that I picked from our triangle color mixing was two parts navy, one part cabernet, one part forest green. And the color felt fairly purple overall. I think here, I feel more of a navy plus purple vibe versus feeling purple overall, even though it definitely does lean purple. But a lot of this is because of just the way the colors layered on top of each other. And there are parts of the yarn that feel more like a true navy without having some of that red in. And then there's areas that feel more purpley pink. And this is the plus, the benefit of doing this kind of layering because we have a tonal yarn. It's a very subtle colorway, but not only are there shifts in the depth of color, but there's shifts in the hue. And that is the thing I really love about this technique. For the third main colorway, we went in a much softer direction, starting with a mint green tonal using that forest green dye at a low depth of shade. And then we added speckles from all three of our colors on top of the yarn in a low immersion steam pan. We got some really nice sharp speckles. There is a little bit of some pastel spread that you can feel around that Cabernet and in some places around the Navy where some of the dye did spread a little bit more. I mean, it's possible that that happened around some of the more forest green color as well, but since the base was already a pastel forest green, uh, that is not as obvious. I'm really glad I went for all three colors on top of this. I just love how it turned out. And although this is not the first example I've done where I've dyed a tonal and then speckled on top of it, that is a technique-wise a something I get questions about a lot, about dyeing the yarn a color first and then speckling on top of it. And so I want you all to know that there is a video on that that will be coming up as its own like moment versus a part of a live stream or another video. So a standalone video on that is coming. So please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you don't miss it. Finally, we have our yarn mop, which made an appearance in a few of the projects that we did this time. Uh, I used it to soak up different dye in the pots from some of the layering. And then we used it to wet my fingers on from speckling and then to use up the rest of those speckled dyes. And I love it. I love the way the colors spread and combined to give us this rich berry purple, which is also a little bit muted. And I think that this color pairs with the speckled colorway in such a sophisticated way. Uh, the two of them are begging to be used in a project together. So here we have the yarn from part two of our challenge. I don't know if I'd work all four of these together in one set, but certainly I think that these two or these three work really well together. And then even like those three work well together. I think that, you know, going for something loud, subtle saturated to loud to subtle pastel would work. Having three more subtle colors and one wild one may not necessarily work that well together, but color-wise, they all look great together. And then when we bring in the colors and mops from the first part of this color challenge, there are even more options on how you can combine things. But one thing that absolutely stands out to me is that for having a color challenge with three very deep saturated colors, the palette doesn't feel that deep or dark overall. I guess only, so maybe the yarn mops don't count, but I guess half of the colorways feature these colors in their darker, more true tone. Uh, so we've got our layered, we've got our layered twisted, and then our tonals at 1% depth of shade up there. And then we've got our pastel with speckles on top, our heavier speckled but on white, and then our dip dyed. Those three feel lighter to medium toned. And so, yeah, I guess I expected that I was gonna have a lot more dark saturated tones. I absolutely can see me playing with this color palette again. I think that the colors work well using at a lighter depth of shade and also super saturated. Uh, they balance each other really, really nicely. I would like, hmm, I think the only thing that I feel like I'm missing here and that I wish I had was a saturated, 
layering the powder immersion style and getting the three colors pretty dark and having like that variegated saturated version without having as much pastel or white uh, certainly there's other things I could think of I'd do with these three colors but of the things that I sketched out towards the beginning when I was thinking about this project and now looking at the finished colorways that I created, that's the only thing I can think of that I wish could have been there. I wanna give a huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons, including Karen Siegel, Jessica Parco, Don Jans, Tamara Spanez, uh, and the Fiber patrons whose names you see up, but really to all my patrons, thank you so much for helping guide the direction of some of the content that I release. And, it's really fun to create polls every month that you vote in and give me that feedback of, well, whatever the theme was, whether it's an abstract inspiration, a color challenge, a yarn base I haven't played with before, or a list of projects that have been on my list for a while that I haven't done. Having that input is so much fun because sometimes you pick something that is very different from what I might have picked looking at the same list. And so that makes it that much more fun because I don't know, I just have a lot of ideas and having some help narrowing it down is really, really helpful. If you would like to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon, visit patreon.com slash Chemnitz for more details. Most of the things I post over on Patreon are exclusive for Chemnitz patrons, but if you join today, you can go back and look through all of the things that I've posted previously. However, there is also an option to just follow me on Patreon without signing up or pledging. And so then if I ever make a post public after giving it to patrons for a limited time, you can get that emailed to you. And so that is something that you can do as well. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really, really like doing these color challenges. I also really like doing them in two parts uh, because often after the first one, I find that there's a lot of things that I feel like are missing and so it's helpful to then go through and give uh, another shot at it. But of course I'm definitely open to feedback. I know that I will do another ch color challenge like this at some point in the future. I don't know exactly when, but feel free to leave suggestions for colors that I should combine, especially ones that maybe don't necessarily go well together. That would be a real challenge. And then I would probably find myself playing a lot more with varying the depth of shade of each of the different colors. For example, doing a pastel with speckles on top of it and things like that to help uh, have something that feels like it works without the colors competing too much. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.